good evening. Welcome to Advent, day 16, I think. <laughs> it's amazing how it mushes together. We still have COVID in the house. David is now at his peak, it seems. He's mumbling around. I can't believe that he's still sitting at his computer and working all day, but he's not well. Um, I went out to get groceries today because I figure since he coughed in my mouth last night that I, while we were sleeping that I'm probably a day or two away from it myself. Hopefully not. So far, I'm still good. Um, we now have the two dogs in the house, and of course, as soon as I start talking, guess who arrives? Down. So tonight, we're going to make one of my favorite uh, dinners as on the ramp up to Christmas. I do it at other times of the year as well, but for some reason, it, as soon as December hits, that I start having a hankering for enchiladas and mac and cheese done specifically. And I'll do the mac and cheese for you guys, because my mom's mac and cheese recipe is a little bit different than your average. Heavy on the cheese, zero milk. <laughs> Lots of butter. Uh, so what do we need for enchiladas? We need tortillas. I personally like the Costco uh, uncooked. So what I will do is brown these in the pan and they're as close to fresh as you can get without actually having to start from scratch. You need, I like ground beef, but chicken as well is just perfectly fine. Ground beef, a um, couple of cloves of garlic, Half an onion, which we're going to do next. I'm going to brown the onion. Cheese, grated. I'll have to grate this. Seasoning. Now, um, Grayson is a fan of the Jacobson taco seasoning. I personally like to control my seasoning. So normally I do separate onion, separate garlic, separate chili powder. Um, still can't remember the name of the spice that I couldn't find in the... Cumin. Cumin. Mike, I, we couldn't, neither one of us could think of the name of cumin, and I couldn't find it in the drawer. I know what the jar looks like, couldn't find the cumin. So we were apparently out of cumin, which is why I'm kicking into the taco seasoning. Um, again, all this recipe will be below in the info section. But we're going to be using the taco seasoning this time. The cool thing about this, so we've got lots of allergies in our house, and normally I wouldn't touch taco seasoning with the barge pole because of my fear of um, some of the weird additives they add in those packet mixes. But this has, n oh, oh, smoked pack brica. Yeah, this has nothing funky in it. There is silicone dioxide. Silicone dioxide? Yeah, I have no idea what that is. Anti-clumping, probably. Oh, it's an anti-clumping. Well, we're probably. not. Probably. We apparently are not allergic to this, or at least Grayson is. We trust Ben. Oh, I guess they trust Ben, the Jacobson guy. But so far, no adverse reactions to this, so we're going to go for it. And then I like a little bit of the all-purpose seasoning. It has onion, onion powder, and then just a mild thing with a little bit of lemon. It's a salt substitute, but I like to use it with salt in things. What else did I leave out? Oh, the tomatoes. So diced tomato tomatoes. Tomatoes. These are fire roasted. I'm not very particular about my uh, tomatoes. I do diced tomatoes and then um, probably about half of this can of tomato paste in my enchiladas. You can also add salsa. Um, if I have salsa, I will. Um, I think I still have a little bit of the dip left. And thanks, Marilyn, for that info because Marilyn put it on top of her enchiladas. Isn't that a good idea? All right, so in a frying pan, this ca this time cast iron, I do like to cook my meat in cast iron, I have sweated or cooked until almost translucent, half an onion, in a couple of glugs of olive oil, generous amount of olive oil. To that, I'm going to add two cloves of garlic and the ground beef. And this is uh, one pound, I believe. Let's check the pack. Oh, one and three quarters pounds. So one and three quarters pounds. And I'm just going to start cooking it until the ground beef is done. Mix it in. I will add the spices close to the end so that they don't cook out too much of the flavor. 
And we'll cook this on medium heat until it's done. And then I will uh, get back to you. Right now I'm going to grate some cheese and prepare my pan. Okay, while well, my hamburger cooks, I am going to start cooking the tortillas. They can sit and rest while we wait to put things together. So again, I've put a generous bit of olive oil in here, and I am going to heat it up and throw a tortilla in. Let it brown. Should have let it heat up a little more. We'll let that heat up and we'll put, cook our tortillas. Just so they're browned a little bit. They don't have to be cooked a ton. But they're going to be baked in the oven for at least 20 minutes. Looks like the hand is starting to go as well now. about good enough to put the spices in. So the next thing I'm going to do is put about a teaspoon of purple seasoning in. And then I'll taste this and decide whether it needs more or less. And then this will be about a half a teaspoon. There. And then a little salt, a little pepper. And then I'll taste it later to see if it needs salt. It should have been hotter. Let me get a plate ready for it. I put my finished tortillas in a plate with foil. That way they'll stay a little bit moist when it's time to build the, the enchilada. So as these finish, I'm going to put them into this foil and close the lid. This is almost done through, so I'm going to turn it down. And honestly, I don't think I even need to smell it. I can tell you it's strong enough. So, here we are. So we turn it down. I'm going to add half of, a little less than half, about a third of my tomatoes. Well, not a half. A half of, tom half of a can of my tomatoes mix it in. And that's just to distribute the sauce inside the enchilada as well as over the enchiladas when I finish the exterior sauce. There we go. There's that. Okay. We're going to turn that off because it's ready. Remember, even if this isn't absolutely cooked all the way through, it's going in the oven for another 20 minutes. I couldn't see any pink. So I'm satisfied that it's done enough. You don't need to overcook it. Okay, and then this is ready to come out. I guess I'm gonna use this before. Oh, way ready to come out. A little greasy the first one. The rest of these won't be as uh, greasy. There. There. And we're also ready to create. So what I'm gonna do is at the same time, I'm going to take my tortilla that's finished cooking. I'm going to scoop in a generous helping of the ground beef. I'm going to take a pinch, about a quarter of a cup, maybe a little less than a quarter of a cup, of cheese. I'm going to roll this up. And this is quite hot. I'm going to roll this up. 
and put it, this is why it's good to cook your tortillas ahead of time, because then it's not quite so hot on your hand. Come on. I think I'm going to turn the temp down on that a little bit. Once this is rolled up, I'm going to put it, let's just get a little hot pad for myself. I'm going to put it in, in this case, my Dutch oven. Normally, I use an eight and a half by 11 large um, cake pan. I have a glass one that my grandmother left for me, but it's gone missing. I'm hoping it's at one of my kids' houses and that I brought a meal in it and forgot. But needless to say, we need to look for it. I'm actually not gonna fold this close. I'm gonna let these cool a little bit. I'm gonna turn off the rear burner, off, and just work on tortillas for a while. I'll get back to you when I get these all rolled up in the pan here. Here's the first one in the pan, and I'm going to cram them in as tight as I can all the way to the other side. All right, so after I have filled my pot with pre-cooked tortillas or uncooked tortillas if you buy them pre-cooked in a bag, with the ground beef mixture and cheese, I cram them all in here. If you put this in the eight and a half by 11 pan, you don't have to cram them like this, but because I don't have my normal um, cake pan, I'm, I'm cramming a bit more than I normally would. And this is approximately 12 to 14 enchiladas. And then, now what I'm doing back here is, uh, you know how I told you you needed one can? You really need two cans. I happened to be digging in the freezer and I found some of my hand um, frozen tomatoes from last season, so I'm going to go ahead and incorporate that in. It is the same amount as is in one can, so about 14 ounces of tomato. These are whole peeled tomatoes that were just immediately frozen. It'll give it a more of a fresh flair. And then um, I put in half a can of tomato paste and then another half a can of fire roasted diced tomatoes. I'm gonna, and I'm mostly doing this to incorporate it all together and make a better sauce. I'm going to add some spices to it, probably some more of the taco seasoning. And I'm also melting these tomatoes because they came out in a chunk out of a Ziploc bag. And this is when a garden comes in handy. This is what I do with most of my tomatoes in the summer. Is just scald them, peel them, and throw them directly into sandwich-sized bags. And then I cook with them in the winter. There's a few bits left in here from the hamburger. I've just put it into the same pan that I cooked the ground beef in. And so some of the spice flavors will already be in here. I also am now up to a solid um, two cups of grated cheese or half of a, not the Costco size chub, but the normal store. I think it's a two pound brick. So you're using one pound of cheddar cheese. This just happens to be white cheddar because that's what we had. Let's see if we can get this melted. I need a lid for it, don't I? Let's see if I can get it. There. Well, so we'll melt this down, incorporate it. I'm gonna turn it on simmer, actually. And then what's gonna happen is I'm gonna add a little bit of the taco seasoning and then I'm going to pour it over the top of this. So just pour it all over this, wherever it lands. And then I'm going to sprinkle the rest of the cheese all over the top. Put this in a 350 degree oven for two hours. And then um, it'll come out and we'll be ready to eat it. Here is the finished enchiladas. And um, I personally like these crispy bits that kind of go on the sides. If you don't, you can put in a little more tomato. Let me scoop some out in the bowl for you. You can see how they scoop up. If, if these are in the eight and a half by 11 dish, it's much easier to stick to one enchilada per person. I am not particularly picky about that. So I just go down and kind of cut it like lasagna. So you get soft dough in the in saturated stuff and then you get crispy on the edge, which I love the crispy. And you get a nice melty cheese on the top. Just steal a little bit. And there you have it. Enchiladas.
Okay, that's me tonight. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, make some enchiladas. Let me know how you like it. And if you do any changes, definitely let me know in the comments and we can try it over here at this end of the house too. I originally made this recipe when I was like 18 years old, 17 years old and still living at home. I found a can of enchilada stuff, sauce and um, made the recipe following those directions. And then over the years, I've just said, well, I'm not going to buy fancy sauce for that and just made it myself with my own tomatoes and my own spices from scratch. So anyway, that's how I, that's how my main meal recipes evolve. Baking, that's a whole different kettle of fish, but meal cooking, there's always room for change and experimentation. I hope you do some experimenting. I hope you make, try enchiladas. Let me know how they turn out. Um, if you have, if you like this video, subscribe, ring the bell. And if you want to see more videos, definitely ring the bell. Leave me a comment and I'll see you tomorrow for day 17. Bye.